Today we're going to be taking a quick look at how to rig up everything in the April Monster Bass bag. But even better, we're going to take this downstairs to the pool pond and get a fish's POV to see what all these bad boys look like underwater. Hi making folks and welcome to the channel. If you're here for the first time, my name is Vinny and this channel is all about hunting and fishing. We got how to's, reviews, unboxings, as well as vlogs of us getting out there hunting and fishing and doing the outdoor thing. So if you're into that sort of thing and you find yourself enjoying this video at any point in time, make sure you give it a thumbs up button. Consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. And if you don't, I guess that's okay too. All right, real quick, Monster Bass has changed the game again, obviously. They started putting out these reusable bait bags instead of the boxes that just get wet, soggy, and break apart and whatnot. They give you this reusable bait bag where you can throw your uh, overflow tackle in there, take with you, grab a little bit for bank fishing or the kayak. That's cool enough. But now it's basically a fishing kit. It's not just a bag of bait. You can take this thing out with your rod and reel and go out and catch some fish. This is all you need. And if you don't know how to use the baits in there, <laughs> They got that covered too. This here is a 23 page little pamphlet of how to fish everything in this uh, bag, as well as got little QR codes where you can look up some videos and watch how to do it. I mean, it's got all kinds of information, but that's not really what this video is about. So let's move on to what this bag highlights. And that is the Carolina rig. It bust this bag open right fast. So in the bag, it comes with everything you're gonna need. Oops. So first off, we got the 3 odd EWG Monster Bass hooks, as well as this little Monster Bass Carolina rig kit right here. It's got your weights, your beads, your swivels, as well as uh, some little metal clackers. Clackers. Sounds funny. Clackers. And then you get two soft plastics to throw on the back of that Carolina rig. We got the Z-Man Boar Hog right there, as well as the Grande Bass. Airtail wiggler. Now I'm assuming airtail means there's uh, air in the tail. Maybe the tail uh, starts to float, gives it a little bit more action. Can't wait to get that down in the pool pond and see how that works. And Z-Man, by the way, if you're not familiar with them, their plastics tend to float with that elastic. So we're gonna see what that looks like on the Carolina rig, see if it floats up and things, but we'll get to, we'll get to that in a second. Dropping stuff. All right, so we're not gonna geek out too much on gear and everything for this uh, video, but if you wanna see a more detailed video on any of these rigs, just let me know in the comments below and we'll see if we can't work that out for you. So I got the Carolina rig all rigged up. Now all you're gonna do, I like to use braid uh, as my main line on all my fishing poles because I love the sensitivity of it, I love the strength, and uh, it works for me, especially in the area that I fish and usually what I'm fishing for. So all you're gonna do with the Carolina rig, if it stops hooking my pants, all right, so the first thing you want to do is you're going to put your weight on your main line and you're going to follow it directly by a bead. Then you want to put your clacker on behind that. Then another bead. Then you want to attach the little swivel on the end of that that came in your kit. Then you want to put a leader, either monofilament or fluorocarbon because since it's a slow moving rig, you want to make sure you use a less visible leader because them uh, fish are going to have time to take a look at it and assess the situation before they bite. And then you want to put your uh, EWG or worm hook on there. Now you don't have to get all complicated with all of these beads and clackers. You definitely have the weight because that wouldn't be a Carolina rig if you didn't have the weight on it. But you're gonna wanna have at least one bead on there and that's gonna protect that knot from that weight hitting up against it and end up uh, messing up your knot. But the purpose of the beads and that little clacker is basically to make that noise. So when you're pulling it through the water, it gets the attention of them fish assistants. And then of course, last but not least, you're just gonna pick your soft plastic and feed them on that hook. Let's go see what they look like on the water. Off to the pool pond. So you can see how buoyant that Z-Man plastic is, which is really good if you want to keep that bait suspended just off the bottom uh, for those suspended fish, but you still want to be able to drag that weight across the bottom so you can feel the contour of the ground. See if there's any drop-offs or structure or anything like that under the water.
moving on to the grande bass worm this one's going to be really good if you want to keep that bait hugging the bottom especially because that tail is going to have that air trapped in it and the tail is going to want to start getting kind of suspended you're going to sit there waving at them bass it's enticing them to come on in and take a nibble All right, next up we got the ARC CT five through seven. It's a flat bill crankbait that dies five to seven feet, obviously. Now I've been really liking the stuff that ARC comes out with. Uh, the first one we got was a top water kind of a pencil bait. Love that thing. I actually have a video out if you want to see that. It's uh, this one right here. And then the last uh, ARC that we got in the Monster Bass bag was actually a lipless crankbait, but unfortunately my uh, puppy got it caught in his lip and I had to destroy it so that I can save my dog. That video is right here. Well, I'll leave a link to those in the description below. But anyway, check this thing out. It's got that kind of translucent, sexy shad type of color. Doesn't really say what they call the color on this thing. But the cool thing about this thing, if you notice, you can see the weights right there in the front. There's actually a magnet holding those weights together right there in the front, because that's where you want the weight to be when you're fishing it, when it's swimming like that. But if you take it, see if I can do this without hooking myself, when you cast it like that and give it a that jerk, oh, only got one down, hold on. There we go. So when you go to cast it, the weight is gonna shift to the back right there. So you give it a long cast, making it fly through the air like that back first, but then when you get it in the water, they go back to the front. And that magnet holds them there. So you can turn it back upside down, the magnets stay there. It's got a little bit of a knock to it. Ow! Those hooks are sharp. Jeez. All right, so to rig one of these guys is pretty much straightforward. If it's got one of these little split rings in the front, you can just tie it straight on today with any your favorite fishing knots. Or you might want to go ahead and do a loop knot, as I did right here, a non-slipping loop knot. That way uh, you can get the most action out of it, and that knot's not trying to restrict it in any way. All right, so we're not going to really be able to test out how this thing casts because my pool pond's only 13 foot long, but I can't wait to see what this thing looks like underwater. So without further ado... So this thing's got a lot more noise than I thought it was going to have originally, looking at it the way that magnet held its ball bearings together. It's got a nice little knock to it. It's got a tight wobble. You can see right there, it's super slow mode. Just shaking that thing. And right here you can see how that bait deflects off of that piece of wood just like a square bill supposed to. All right, so next up we got the AOS2 by Lucky Strike. This thing is a five to eight foot diving crankbait. It is a three eighths ounce, two inch. Check out the paint job on this guy. I mean, check that out. It's got a natural pattern, kind of like a bluegill, I guess. But this that blue flake in there that just shines. Goodness gracious, can't wait to see what that looks like in the water. Now, of course, you're gonna rig this thing just like you would that square bill. It's got a pretty decent rattle to it too. So we're not going to spend too much time on this. Let's see what it looks like in the water. So as you can hear, this one's got a pretty good rattle to it too. This one's a little bit more tinny or a little higher pitch than the arc crankbait. And as you can see right here, when we switch over to the slow mode, it's got a much wider wobble than that square bill did.
And last but not least, we have a jerk bait by Vicious Fishing. This is the Ripper 110. It's a half ounce floating jerk bait. Man, look at those eyes, would you? So this one here is in that ever so popular sexy shad. Beautiful, beautiful, nice little metallic shimmer to it. Sharp hooks. Trust me, I know. Now with this jerk bait, it does have a split ring on the nose, so you could technically tie any fishing knot to it and just toss it out there and work it on back. But I recommend because it's a jerk bait that you would put a non-slip loop knot on there just to make sure you're not restricting any of the motion, this thing jerking around in the water. So on the package of this thing, it certainly said a floating jerk, but the pool pond determined that that was a lie. It seems to be more of a slow sinking uh, jerk bait. Now testing this thing out in a 13 foot long uh, pool pond is a little bit more difficult than I, I originally thought it might be, but you'll get the idea with this underwater footage of what it looks like. Right here is just a little swimming action for you. See what it looks like when you're just swimming it through the water. Well, that's what it looks like underwater. Hope this video helped you guys out getting to see the POV of the fish or the lures underwater, what they look like, how they work, and so on and so forth. Again, if you want to see any more of these in detail, make sure you let me know in the comments and I'll try and work that out. Uh... And again, I will leave a link in the description below uh, for Monster Bass as well as discount code so you can save some moolah on your first month's subscription. There was something else I wanted to say. Nope. That's pretty much it. Well, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one, folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't. And ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our future uploads. We'll send you a little notification letting you know, hey, the next one's up. Other than that, I guess uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye.